life. But this particular individual, it scares me to think what she's going to be like as a 50 year old yes. ex con. Right. It's my thought too, is the fact that she was 15 when she committed this crime and yet she was immediately put into the adult system. Am I correct about that? Well, because she was charged with first degree murder. So there's no juvenile equivalent for that. So if you are charged with first degree murder, if you're actually indicted and charged and arrested for it, then you automatically wow. are charged as an adult. I'm not exactly sure how Missouri's juvenile laws out are right at this moment, but that's how it was at that time before the Supreme Court shook everything up. And they've been resentencing kids yeah. for years now who have been, you know, sentenced to life without parole in the past. And I think it's a good idea. I really do. And the only other um, newsworthy thing that's occurred since she's been incarcerated was that Elizabeth Olton's mom, Patty Price, ended up filing a lawsuit, a civil suit against her. She was awarded $400,000, but she actually oh. filed a, another part of the suit was she sued Alyssa specifically so that she can never profit off of her daughter's death. So she can't ever sign mm -hmm. a book deal or write a movie you know, anything having to do with Elizabeth's murder, Alyssa won't be able to profit from. And she literally is paying back, paying Elizabeth's mom what she was entitled to from the court ruling through working in prison. It was reported that her books can't get over $500 on them. Oh, okay. She ever gets over $500 on her books that automatically the difference goes to Elizabeth's mom to pay back what she was ruled to pay her for losing this lawsuit. So, okay. Wow. So I have a question about that. I was under the impression and I'm guessing maybe I was under the impression that that was a federal law that a murderer was not uh, allowed to profit, but is that maybe a state by state law? And that's where I've seen that before. I, Why does she have to win a lawsuit for that to be the case? I haven't ever seen a law about that. I only am saying that from a previous case, although it seems in my mm -hmm. brain that it was a long time ago. I'm going to do some research on that because maybe I'm thinking of a very specific case, but I thought it was a law where they could not, maybe it's a certain state where you can't profit from that. Yeah, it might be. It might be. Well, because I've heard of other inmates profiting, making money in prison. Yes. But maybe not necessarily specifically connected to a certain crime. Hmm. Like John Wayne Gacy sold paintings, supposedly. Yeah. But he didn't write a book about murdering one specific boy and sell that. So yes. I'm sure okay. it is a state a state by state thing that would make sense. I don't even see why that would need to be a law. It seems like I it don't either. Sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the the case that's coming to my mind was, was kind of maybe a book deal. Maybe it was OJ Simpson. Oh, maybe. Because remember his, but they sued to say that he couldn't profit from the book deal, right? I don't know. I'm going to research that. I'm going to figure out what well, I'm but thinking he of. He wasn't in prison either, though. Oh, that's true. So that really <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> technically he wasn't guilty of that. You're right. So I don't know what I'm thinking of know. then. Yeah, but see, I don't know under how many instances murderers have tried to profit, but regardless, that's something that she didn't want specifically. Yeah. So that was what she sued for. I've never even heard of, had never even heard of that in any other case before. And there's been a couple other cases I've done with civil lawsuits, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it was because I had such an online presence, but for whatever reason, she wanted to make sure that she yeah. wasn't going to be able to, which is a terrible thought. And so that's really, it is. really good that she has to make her mother money in other ways. Yes. But it is I, I, it's totally crazy to me that she is just going to be paying her back, you know, 400 plus thousand dollars while she's. Well, which, dollars. which makes me think that I wonder if you did the math of the amount of money that she makes in prison and her prison job, if she has one, how long it would really actually take her to pay off that. Like, is it 343 years or, <laughs> I mean, it has to be a ridiculous amount of time. Right. Especially when you only make, you know, a dollar, two dollars at a time. 
Right. I have no idea how she's getting paid in prison or what she's doing, but I know that they don't make very much money. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting so to see that. She'll be paying her back for the rest of her life. Yes. Which is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She should have to think about it every moment of her life, even if she wants to forget it. She also sued the treatment facility and the specific wow. doctor that was treating her. Elizabeth's because, mother? Yes. Oh, okay. Elizabeth's mother sued the mental health facility where Elizabeth DeMonte was receiving treatment following her suicide attempt. Partially due to the Prozac dosage increase, but also due to some of the notes and things. I mean, he had really deemed her to be dangerous Mm. and they didn't feel like enough was done to prevent her from being a danger to her community, even though her mental health professionals felt pretty confident that she was. Part of the $400,000 settlement came from that lawsuit. Yes, yeah, so yeah. it's a very sad story. Many families ripped apart. I always, you know, worry about her siblings. Now, do her parents, are her parents still around or heard from? Are her grandparents still supportive of her? Well, the last I heard from her grandparents, her grandma did speak at her sentencing. Her grandfather, who also lived in the home, I never saw any statement of any sort from him. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother was around, but she never was interviewed, you know, or anything like that. Yeah. Which it must be so difficult for them because, you know, their daughter, was it their daughter was Alyssa's mom or their son? I'm pretty sure. Was um, her father. I'm pretty sure that it was their daughter. Yes. So the maternal grandparents, which must be Mm -hmm. so difficult for them to where you have a, a child who has a child, can't take care of that child because of their addiction. And then you go to take in this child and their siblings and... And this happens. Well, I mean, I can't imagine how they wouldn't feel to blame. At this point, it's multiple generations of one family not being able to be successful in society. So I'm sure that doesn't feel great for them. And it kind of reminds me of, because you guys had said in a previous episode something about twin killers. Oh, (laughs) yes. (laughs) (laughs) I had... I had done an episode of Twin Killers. I mean, of course I have, but the two girls that I had done, they were raised by their great-grandmother. And that same great-grandmother had also raised their mother because her daughter, the grandmother, couldn't, was incarcerated when she had her. So this one great-grandmother was responsible, you know, pretty much for multiple generations of this family. And when we get to the last, her great-granddaughters, they murder her granddaughter. Yes, so, I do know that story. How, how, how oh must my. she feel? I mean, you can't blame her. You know, it's not her fault, but you just have to think, well, I wouldn't want to be interviewed if I were you either. Like, what is there to yeah. say? I'm bad at this. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm, good at this. Huh? I'm not good at this. I, I should have taken a class about this. I don't know. But oh. she had many other children and grandchildren and great grandchildren who all turned out fine. Really? You know, is yeah, they had there's multiple other siblings. All the other kids were, you know, nobody else had this kind of issues, but just that one branch of her family. (laughs) That one little branch. Yes, that one little branch. (laughs) Well, Kaysen, do you have any other questions or comments? Um How do you feel, Kaysen? How do you feel? (laughs) Um, Just tell us how you feel. (laughs) I don't know. This this one, um, was actually really interesting in comparison to the other two that we had done because she, um, she, in a way, you know, she was already getting help and, and she was in the process of rehabilitation. And even though things, I guess, were, were going bad for her, she was in the middle of trying to, well, I guess she wasn't trying to better herself, but, you know, her grandparents were trying for her to get her into a better position and, you know, and it still failed for her. So that's interesting just because the other two cases we had done, you know, it seemed like the entire world was against those kids. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I feel like. Right. And they were under influences of other people. Too, yes. You know, right. some of them. And in I mean, this she, case, it's just her acting of her own volition. No matter what everyone around her is doing to try to help her, she still just continues on the trajectory of doing what she wants to do to get the feelings she wants to get. Because yeah. this was all I, about feelings for her. 
I also she wanted wondered, to feel it, you know. Yeah, very different. Yeah. I wonder the the grandparents, you know, living with her. And I, I know that they obviously knew that she had some mental issues with her impatient and her suicide attempt, but literally they did not see the writing on the wall, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I just, I feel like they didn't check in with her enough or, or really know what was going on in her day-to-day life. I mean, if that was my kid, I, I would be reading her diary, honestly. <laughs> you would think that you would at least be in her room when she was at school. You know, doing all those right. things that I we're yeah. sneaking around. It's hard enough for parents to raise their children. So when you then ask grandparents to mm-hmm. raise children or other members of your family to raise your children, the chances of things getting overlooked they just become greater and greater. Mm, so so this was a kind of a situation where it was the events that all had to line up to take place for her to have the kind of freedom and the kind of trust within her family to be able to have this kind of life. And they didn't, her, her grandmother, you know, her grandparents, her family, they never have said anything about anything other than her one suicide attempt. So it's not like she was running around her house as, acting like she was possessed or, you yeah. know, trying to like ritual sacrifice things in the basement. She did a very good job of compartmentalizing what she was going to show her family, Mm -hmm. how much of it she would show her family, how much of it she would show her friends. But yet underneath is where all the bad stuff was, you know, Mm -hmm. and you would think if they had just been maybe a little bit more nosy (laughs) then maybe. But being older people as well, sometimes you you always feel like there's not going to be that connection between even knowing what the hell these kids are talking about. That's so true. Yeah. That that's like she could have said i this is from a movie and they could would have probably believed yes it. song lyrics <laughs> video game anything yes. i wonder too if um if the grandparents because she was getting help if they thought well we'll let the experts you know handle this and she's getting care and the experts know what they're talking about yeah, absolutely. you know kind of a hand more of a hands-off thing because she was getting help and they felt comforted by that, I guess. But then I also think it speaks to the fact that that was her first absence from school, unexcused. To me, I find that kind of interesting. Like she really was compartmentalizing if she was able to go to school and function. And and mm-hmm. she was a good yeah, student. Yeah, it sounds like that. So yeah, she was very good at doing that. And she went to church. Oh. She was also a regular church. Right. So Don't forget about for the church. Her parents, mm-hmm. Yeah, her grandparents are heartland religious you know what i mean they go to church you know so to them if she goes to church and has her relationship with jesus you know what Mm -hmm. i mean that provides them some protection in their eyes absolutely yeah the other thing about the grandparents that i always think about is the fact that you know they had four kids dumped right on them not Mm -hmm. just one kid but two daughters two sons all different ages. That's just so much, you know, especially for an older couple to probably have to deal with. So I, I'm yeah. sure they were likely doing the best that they could, you know. So it's yeah. it's just really hard. It's just really hard to expect that people can ever predict what anyone else is going to do. Yeah, I'm sure that was overwhelming for them. Definitely. So I'm sure it made it a lot harder for them to, but they were still doing a lot. I mean, they were still doing quite a bit for her, you know, but it, without her, like I said, without her wanting to be a better person, there's really no hope. Yeah. yeah. We thank you again so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you. Thanks for and having to all, me, guys. And we're so glad that you were here. And to our listeners, if you're not already listening to a Murderous Minors Killer Kids podcast, it's a fantastic podcast and you should go check it out. And so if you want to let them know, um, where can they find your show and how can they find you? You can find the show anywhere you get your podcast. I'm on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Podbean, uh, Murderous Minors, Killer Kids. And I'm on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat at Killer Kids Pod. All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. And I hate to say that there will probably be other cases that we could talk about, but I hope that there are other cases that we can talk about in the future. (laughs) I'm sure we'll be doing this again. There's all kinds of cornfield crazy out there. This is Mike Morford. You may know me as co-host of the true crime podcast, Criminology. 
I'd like to invite you to listen to my new podcast, The Murder in My Family, which is out right now. In each episode, I discuss a murder case and include an interview with a family.